It is. It's after 10. Oh. Yeah, move up. See if I can put the microphone on and it doesn't pull my shirt down. You know, we gotta we gotta worry about things like that. Oh, um, putting on my microphone because it's heavy and so it has a tendency to pull everything down. So you have to kind of be a little bit careful. So, exactly, and I have to think about what am I going to wear, yeah. <laughs> you know. So anyway, but yeah, I guess you guys are okay with me not wearing a mask because I've, I've been fully vaxxed for, for, for over six weeks now. So uh, yeah, go ahead and move closer. Yeah, a lot of my regulars are, are not here for whatever reason, so. We're, we're kind of quiet today, so I don't know if they're going to show up on Tuesday or if they just weren't interested in this or what. But anyway, this is a definitely a, a change from what I've done in the past. <laughs> so, you know, because what I was going to talk about today, and of course trying to use all the different machines and all the different ways to do stuff, it, it, it's, you know, visible mending. Because that's kind of the new trend is, you know, granted you could go to the store and get clothes that are already ripped to shreds, and some people like them that way. Um, I grew up that if your clothes were worn out, that meant you were poor, and it was very embarrassing because, yeah, you know, we we were not very wealthy. So it was embarrassing to have clothes that were tattered. And that's what my husband always so. says to my granddaughter. If, you, if your dad can't afford to buy you good jeans, I'm grump, will take you to the store. <laughs> yeah, if you, can, if you can find any. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Because I, I cut up a pair of jeans, and I thought, oh, I'll just go get another pair. Well, they don't make the ones I like. And then when I went to the store, I'm going, Is, are there any jeans that aren't shredded? You know? Uh -oh. So anyway, it's kind of hard. But so, you know, I decided this is kind of a, a definitely a change, you know, doing visible mending. And so I was, all these different ways that we can, you know, fix things that we have problems with. Because I don't know about you, but, of course, I have never you know, just gone home and said, oh, I'm just going to get this little bleach cleaner and just clean this just a little bit, and all of a sudden you have a bleach spot or something like that. I remember there was a gal years ago, she used to come to my club out in Colorado, and I'd always laugh because she would have embroidery in very interesting places. And I'm, I'm going, well, why, why did you put that snowman right there? She goes, well, you see, I spilled, or, you know, and I'd always laugh at her because she'd do that. But, you know, that's something that we can do. So the book... One of the books is called Visible Mending, and I thought it was it was just very fun to go through this and to see all the different things, you know, how creative they can be, because we all have our favorite sweaters, right, that we just love, and it might not, you know, it may get a hole in it, because they do, because we wear it all the time. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is Boro, Boro Boro, and some of you may remember, I do have my jacket, my Boro Boro jacket. Boro Boro was a Japanese... Um, mending and of course you know we're talking about when you're poor right you know they didn't have any money back in the 1700s 1800s or even earlier so they would use heavy threads and they would use patches put the patch over the hole and then use sashiko stitches to mend so this jacket of course is done with you know regular fabric what I did is I just took fabrics and I just ripped them I just rip them into pieces. I do have my base fabric, and I just place them all over my fabric. I didn't care. Willy-nilly, didn't even pay attention. And then I used the Sashiko machine. And if you look, you can see I went, sometimes I went this way. I did on the sleeves. I actually have a V, so I came up and then went down, and I did a V on there. And I just stitched it all down. You can see on the inside, this is a magnet here. A strong magnet you can see all the stitching and so I just stitched and stitched and stitched and stitched and I made my jacket so you could do the same thing if you've got a hole someplace you can use fabric you can either put it on, on top or underneath and you could use some nice heavy thread 
you know, like eight weight thread <clears throat> and do your sashiko stitches. These are just a straight line and you can do straight lines or you could get a sashiko stitching book and you can see in this book it's nice they show you with the different weights of thread because the the smaller the number the heavier the thread so if I say use an eight weight thread that is a really heavy thread that's something you make crochet doilies with okay where a 50 weight thread is your normal sewing weight thread so you can see and they just talk about how you know sometimes they put it on top sometimes they put it underneath and then they just stitch all over it and so now all of a sudden you have a totally different look and they just show you some different things you can do but here's some of the like kind of in the gallery some of the things that she does funny she's putting the dates on it you know so I guess um, and all the different things that you can do it reminds me of the card we have a card out front where a man has his overalls and has all these patches all over it and his wife's going aren't you glad you married a quilter you know but <laughs> And some of them, you know, just because now it's become a big thing to be very artsy and to do this. So you can see all the fun things that you can do with patches in different places. Make it fun. You don't have to do your same old, same old square patches. And you could add things in other places just to make it, you know, where it looks like you wanted it to be that way. And this jacket, which is nice, because it, since it has the princess seams, she stitched all along that one panel, that panel that goes from the side and the princess seam. She stitched that whole panel. So any of the, the holes in there and the patches in there get stitched on there as well as just saying, oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? She just made it totally, totally different. So that is your, your Sashiko stitches with your Boro Boro. And... You know, and then, of course, you can just do the whole thing if you want to. And like me, you know, I just did a whole thing with, of course, this is with the Sashiko machine. I did not do this by hand, just so you're aware. I did it with the Sashiko machine. If you want to know about the Sashiko machine, um, you know, you can talk about prices with Mr. Raymond. But um, they are very fun. Susan, you took a class with it. Do, do you have one? I do, and I, I need another so. class at this point because we went into pandemic and... And, and you've forgotten how to use it. Yeah. It's it's a I love the machine. It's very different though. It's not like your normal machine. So you can't just say, oh, I'm gonna sit down at it. It it can be a little bit tricky because you have to get the bobbin in just right. Mm -hmm. And then it's fine. You know, and it'll and it'll go. But it it's a it's a fun machine. It's a fun machine. And then Evie Hawkins, she has a bunch of stuff um a bit of stitch, I think is her her website. And she does the most incredible things with her Sashiko. She calls her a sassy girl. And she does all kinds of crazy stuff with it. So you can do all kinds of fun stuff. And a lot of times when I do it, um, you know, if I'm going to do a patch on top or even underneath, you know, my, my new favorite notion, right, is my Roxanne glue based it. Which, like I said, two years ago, if you would have said I'd be using glue like I use it, I mean, this thing's almost out. i got to buy some more. I would roll my eyes at you and say, you've got to be kidding me. I will never use glue. And now I use it by the gallon. You know, I use it because it's really nice. I know it's going to wash out. Because I don't necessarily want to fuse a patch down because you know it gets stiff. And I don't want to make it stiff. So, But I need it to stay where I need it to stay while I'm sewing it. So I'll use my glue based it. And then I use my iron to set it so I don't have to wait for the glue to dry. It'll dry right away. And then I can do all my sewing. It doesn't come with the needles. And then you throw it in the wash and it washes away and it's all nice and soft and you just have your stitches. So, you know, my new favorite notion that I use a lot of. Another one is just hand embroidery. Okay. How many of us have actually, actually do hand embroidery anymore? So Judy does that because I, and this, it has a bunch of stitches in there, but I do, ha I want to show you a different book that I, I got. I had to steal it back from my granddaughter <laughs> because when I, when I showed her the book, her eyes, she's now my favorite granddaughter. <laughs> her eyes got really big. She went, oh, because this book is really, really a fun book. I have a lot of embroidery books, and I've been getting them out because I've been teaching my grand, my grandchildren, both even the my grandsons, how to do hand embroidery. And they're just like, okay, well, you know. But then I got this book, and all of a sudden, these are all the same stitches I've always known, 
but it's really different. She does the most beautiful things with it. She does this whole panel. These are flip-flops and you can have shells in there. And she uses beads and the way she sews them up, they look like shells. So she has a beach scene and she does coral. And then she goes through all the different stitches all the different stitches and some little you know and then she makes some changes with them and what's nice is when you go to the parts because you know she's just giving your normal stitches just a modern twist and you can look at all the fun things she does but what's nice is when you get to the part let's see because she has she will show you the stitch so she'll say oh look this is it she'll show you the stitch right and left okay Sometimes I have to cover up the left side because I, I want to go one, two, three, four, and I'm going, no, no, no. All the rights, all the left. So it's nice because we do have left handers that, you know, it's hard for me to teach a left hander because I have to go backwards. So um, it's really nice that she has step by step. How do you do this? I mean, who would have thought just to do, I used to I do the chain stitch all the time. But what, what about taking this and putting, she's, she kind of took another thread in and out of that chain stitch. Um, no, I wouldn't have done that, but she does that and makes a whole different look. So you can do your embroidery. So I did some hand embroidery because, of course, we can do this. So this is one of my pairs of jeans. These actually have holes in them because I actually wore holes. They're so old. Yes, we can move that. Now you can see. Okay, and so this is one that I just did. So I did some applique with the heavy stitches, and then I just did some embroidery, just with French knots and other fun things on there. And this is another pair of jeans <clears throat> that I did the reverse applique. So I put the, the denim in the back, and then I actually did a blanket stitch around it, but then I just started doing some just some stitching. The other, the other knee I haven't done yet. Mm -hmm. So these did not come like this. You know, I didn't pay the extra fifty to hundred dollars to get them. I actually wore them out myself. But um, I just decided to just do kind of a weird flower, and I cut out parts of it. This is where the big. I had a big hole here and a big hole here, and so I went around that. So I had. A, you have to strategically place things, and I. And since it was already cut out, I just thought, okay, I'll just finish cutting it out, and just did some hand embroidery using some of these fun stitches in here and some heavier threads. So this is a really fun book. And like I said, I actually ordered one for me. I don't know if it came in yet or not because my granddaughter snagged mine and I, I don't think. Yeah, there's a box. I'm going to have to check to see. I'm hoping my book came in. That's why I told her. I said, I need it back. And she's looking at me. I said, I will bring it back to you. It's okay. Oh, well, she's done some really fun things. I've been really, she's only eight, and I'm really proud of her. She's just been sewing and figuring it out on her own and doing the fringe because there's, there's some fringe flowers in here, which are really fun. And she's, because we did sit down, and I helped her figure out the fringe. I, I also got her a crochet hook, a small metal crochet hook. She has the big ones, but I got her the small one because, see, she's doing this. She's doing all the fringe. So she's doing this stitch with all the fringe. And you can put it, and they have another one with the flowers. So she's doing the blanket stitch with the fringe. But you need a smaller metal crochet hook to get the, the thread in there. And she, I also ordered a bunch more thread for her because all my embroidery floss is now at her house, too. <laughs> she kind of, she's like, I need some more. And then and she, yeah, everything wound up at her house. So anyway, um, there's a lot of fun things you can do. And that's why I really like that book because it got me to think outside my normal, you know, with all my hand embroidery books. And this one, they have some fun things too. It's like, what do you do if you have a hole? How to do your blanket stitch around the hole? Just little seed stitches here and there. Not quite as in-depth as the other one, but they do have some fun ideas. And then they show you, well, how can you do this with your sweater? You have a hole. Well, now let's add to it to make it look like a work of art instead of the same old, same old. So, you know, little holes here and there, you can cover them up and um, just some fun different 
different stitches that you can do, of course, on your tannies also. You want to do that. This was one, this was an antique tablecloth that had a stain on it. What are you going to do about it? You don't want to get rid of great, great grandma's favorite tablecloth, right? I mean, some of us have stuff we just can't get rid of. But you could do some embroidery on there. Of course, this is hand embroidery. No one says you can't use your machine, right, for machine embroidery. This is a this is a cami that I wore a lot underneath some shirts, and it was one of those, oh, I can just do a little bit of cleaning, and I got a bleach stain right there. So what I did is I, I actually embroidered just to try and make it so it wasn't quite so obvious. So I did this embroidery. It's a very light embroidery because it's on a knit, but I embroidered on it just to kind of get rid of that that stain look so if you look closely you can kind of see it's still there but you can do embroidery on top of it by hand or by machine you know but by hand sometimes it's fun I actually was enjoying sitting around watching okay Miss Scarlet and the Duke and embroidering for those of you that watch PBS you'll know about that show I guess yeah, when you do that do you put some kind of backing when you're doing hand embroidery like a stabilizer um not on the denim ones because the okay. denim was so heavy yeah, I didn't I need to um yes if I were doing something on a knit um you know because they're doing it it's so light and right. how they're doing it they don't have any stabilizer okay. Okay. on there but if you're having trouble say I was trying to do something on this I might put some water soluble on there just to keep it yeah, as I'm doing the stitching, because you don't want to stretch it out. So I don't want to put it in my regular embroidery hoop and then stretch it all out of shape and then, you know, do it and then wash it away because I don't want that after the fact right. on my knits. Okay. So you might have to. It's, it's one of those individual by individual cases. Okay. Yeah, that you'll do that. Um, let's see. Another thing that you can do. And hopefully you guys know about this. How many of you have embroidery machines? Okay, so you all have embroidery machines. Do you know how to skip through your colors? Does everybody know how to skip through their colors? Because, you know, doing some embroidery, these are some shirts that I did a long time ago. And I have some fun things. But this one I decided just to do some butterflies on. Now, I actually didn't need to, but just think if I did have a spot someplace or a hole someplace, I could do this. Now, these butterflies are the full butterfly, and they're pretty stiff, actually. You know, it's one of these designs. They're kind of stiff. They have a lot of colors in them. Actually, no, I take that back. This one I left a color out. This one has all the colors. And if you look on the back, some of them have all the colors. But then what I did with some of the butterflies, I took out some of the colors. So I skipped over them. So if you have software, you can take out colors. But if you don't have the software at your machine, you can just skip a whole color. Once it goes to go to the next color, you know, change your thread, you're going, I don't need that color. You can skip to the next color. So if you don't know how, I can show you. But so this one, some of these are just the outlines. This one just has one of the colors. Because so I think there's two or three colors of blue in here and yellow around the outside. I left all that out, and all I kept was the outline and one of the blues. Because otherwise, it just starts to look all the same. So just doing that and doing something fun, and now all of a sudden you have new life if you happen to have a hole or a stain or something in, in a shirt. And the same thing with this one. I did with this one is some bigger butterflies. So they look more like moths to me. Um, these big ones here. And you can see the, the regular one was this. It had all these different colors in it. So these I started leaving off colors. And this one I actually painted a little bit just for something different. But you can see, so this is all the colors. And then I start leaving off colors just to give it more dimension. And I don't need all that bulk. So you can have a lot of fun just playing around with your embroidery machine and painting. I'm going to do painting and stuff next month. So for I can well I can do thread painting too but I was going to do um, cuz I've done thread painting before but I will do that again if you guys want me to thread paint I I'm starting to keep all my samples <laughs> so I don't have to keep redoing all my samples but thread painting is really fun but we could do thread painting and also how to paint with I'm I'm, I'm oh, you meant paint on the fabric. Right, but with dye I, and Sharpies and stuff. So I'm going to do something totally different. Oh. I, uh, a friend of mine went and said, oh, check this out on Pinterest. I'm not a Pinterest person. Uh -huh. 
oh man, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. I just, I went down that rabbit hole, got lost in the warren, and <laughs> finally surfaced and said, I've got to stop because I can't do all of these things. But you can do all kinds of fun stuff. So, you know, remember when you're looking at things to look outside. We, we, I have a tendency to do this unless someone says, oh, look over here. I'm like, oh, I can do that? Um, there's also patches, you know, so you can put patches on things. And they have, um, let's see, page 44. Because she shows you how to do the patches and everything, but then she has the gallery. So here's some on knits. Because I wouldn't have thought of, you know, your, your cuffs get frayed. You know, just putting a little patch on your cuff and then adding things other places. Of course, this is where I got my idea to put my leaves on my jeans, you know, because I'm a great copier. I'm really good at copying. Of course, after I cut mine out, all my little leaves, I have a sacrificial pair of jeans. I actually went to, I have a pair of capris that I love. I went to put them on, and they, they weren't salvageable. So they got, they got cut up. I mean, my God, they're only 25 years old. I don't know why I had a problem. But after I cut up these, I, I thought, oh, I could have cut them with pinking shears. Well, you know, and done something fun with a pinking shear. But they have some really cute things. So you can do some cute designs. You can just do little squares. I thought that was kind of cute on her sweater. She just did little squares, you know, just to change it up a bit. And it looks like she did it with wool. So she did it with wool. But you can, for you quilters, you can do a quilted design on the back. You can just put big patches everywhere and do that so patches are really fun you can just put patches on and like i did with this one as i just did whoops a bunch of patches with different so the denim this is some denim from here it matches pretty well then this darker ones i put some upside down and some right side up just to give it a little bit more dimension as well as just some embroidery around it but i just went and just did a nice big stitch it wasn't that hard and I want it to fray a little bit, so I left it that way. So it will fray. But that is... And of course, darning. I'm going to have to bring this over here. I forgot about it. I'm going to do darning because, right, we have darning. Of course, a lot of us go, oh, that darn sucks. We'll throw it away. But um, And they're showing darning on knits. And I do have on the list an egg, a wooden egg. I was trying to find, and I, I really thought I had one of, I guess I call them mushrooms. Some of those are called mushrooms, those darning mushrooms. I thought I had one, but I couldn't find it. I might just be in my imagination because I do have a lot of antique tools. Um, I will say that I've really missed, last year, I really missed all the shows, especially the fall festivals. Have, you, have any of you gone up to Waterford to their festival? You, it's it's one of my favorites, yeah. and they have a lot of woodworkers up there that make a lot of wood things, you know, whether for sewing or for cooking and things like that. And I really missed it last year because there's some things that I wanted, and there were some places uh, people I wanted to go talk to about doing something specific for me, saying, "Would you do this for me?" And it might be a big seller for you, you know. Um, but I'm hoping that I can go again because I think I will go buy one just to have one on hand, you know, or maybe get an egg. I don't know. But it's nice to just to put it on your knits. It just holds it up so you can go and instead of having to put it in a hoop or have a stabilizer behind it, that is your stabilizer is that little mushroom or egg. But it's fun to show, you know, the knit because she just kind of sews around the knitted area to give it more color and dimension and do some fun things. And, of course, all your regular darning that you can do. Of course, she's doing it with big, bright colors instead of the way we usually do it. My husband has a pair of pants. He calls those Frankenstein pants because they're so... He actually gave them to me, and he goes, should I throw these away? And I said, no, there's still a little bit of good denim left in them. I, I want to use it. But, um, you know, I, I won't let him do that. <laughs> and then, of course, there's mending my machine. Now, a lot of us have our you know, our darning stitch, right? It's in with the buttonholes, and you put your little thing in and just, just a little bit. Yeah, okay, that, that's okay. But what if we don't want that? What if we want something more bold and dynamic? So I'm going to be bringing this guy over. I forgot I was going to be doing this first. I've got cords and cables and, oh, my goodness, everything everywhere. Okay, so 
I'm going to be doing free motion. I know that terrifies some people. As soon as you say free motion, they get all panicked. How many of you do free motion quilting? So some of you do. Okay. But this is, and this is going to be off on the side. Um, and what I did with this, this was actually a, my, my sacrificial pair that was all ripped up. Okay. And I did put, I actually used some knit stabilizer on the back because this fabric is stretchy. So I used some knit, so it, and I made sure the stretch went the same way, so it would have a little bit of stretch to it. But you can use, you know, like a fusible knit, which I have a lot of, and then we also have the, the woven, and sometimes I use the woven fusible to fuse on the back to hold it on there. So, you know, you can get whatever stabilizers, and we have a lot of these out front. So I did go and fuse it because it, it needs more help. If you wanted to, I could have used a piece of fabric right side facing out right. and put it on with say a heat and bond you know and bonded it on there together you know like you would do an applique and then so I'd have some more color behind it so you know think about well what do I want it to look like and then and you can use heavier threads I'm just going to use the thread that is oh well, this machine is not threaded that's in the machine but I would probably if I were really going to do this I would get a 90 top stitching needle and some 12 weight thread to make it really bold okay and then just use your regular thread in the bobbin you don't need to worry about that I'm going to thread this machine up real quick You know what? I'm yeah, that should be okay. And I am and I put it in free motion mode. Now most of you should you should know where your free motion mode is on your machine. There's usually a little icon and it, it shows something like this with dotted lines going off to the side if you have a baby lock. And you can do your free motion. And what that does is it shuts down, it, it, it lowers the feed dogs, and it makes it so it only puts this in your free motion mode. Okay, so it lowers it. And on a lot of the machines, you can go and decide the height of your free motion, so you can change that up. I have a couple different free motion feed. Let's see, probably put them, can I see them better here on the camera? So one, it's clear, but it's closed, and one is clear. And it's open. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, what? So this is open, so I can really see, and this one's closed, okay. so it's totally closed. And this one, it just gives me better visibility. Okay. Okay. The older I get, the more visibility I need. Sometimes, though, if you have it open like this, because this might come up, even though I fused it down, I might put a top, like a water soluble topper, on top of it, so it doesn't oh, okay. catch, because okay. that opening might catch even this one might catch a little bit but this one might really catch and so I actually purchased these this is the one that comes with with a lot of the machines this is your the O foot and I like that little C foot that's a little circle that I really like that one too but these are mine and these are the bouncing kind like this one so it'll go up and down it'll bounce but they're clear the older I get the more visibility I need so you can we have some of those out front Put my little feet back. And I know that some people, oh, we had a lady come in. She wanted to have something for your feet. If you are interested in one of these, I can always show you. They all, all come in different colors. It's a Yazzie bag. So it has all these places for all your feet. And then it has a zipper area here where you can put in whatever you need. And it has the bigger ones. I actually have one, for those of you that have the sashers, I, my pink one is full of sashers. This one is my traveling foot ones. So I put on my feet when I come here. Do that. But if you're going to do free motion, and this is going to be interesting. I've got so many cables everywhere. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going to see. And so all I'm going to do is, and you can do all kinds of fun stuff with this let's see if I can and I'm going to actually put my gloves on my hands get too slippery and things just slip and slide so I like my gloves we do have one pair of I think medium ones out front but I can always buy new ones I like these gloves they, they're really grippy so they're they're really nice and grippy but you adjust 
And I would just go and just go over and back and over and back and as much as I need to. And then, you know, you can do, of course, you know, if you do it in really bold colors, your husbands will really love it, I know. But see, and then I could go way out and do all kinds of fun stuff. Okay, who did this? I need a faster thing. Oh, there we go, a little too fast. But this is a good, great way, if you're afraid of free motion quilting and stuff, I think I'm going a little too fast. This, doing this will really help you because you can practice with it. And of course, I can go up and back and up and back. And then if I wanted to, I could even go around and do something like this and just make designs wherever I want to and just do something really fun with it. But I've used this um, sometimes, well, not sometimes, but I've used this, the, um, the, the cross-stitch stitch. In a free motion mode or just yeah, yeah. sewing? On the sewing. Uh huh. You know, for people that might be afraid of. Doing the free yes. That one that, you know, the cross stitch. Yes, you can do the cross stitch. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, because I know that a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just do a straight stitch. Usually with my husband, I'll use a. A lot of times I'll use the two or three step zigzag, the one that goes zig, 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 zag, 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 because if you do a big zigzag, sometimes those stitches will get caught. So I do the other one, and I'll just go really fast forward, and then I press the reverse button, and forward and reverse, and I move it so it's doing, think of painting a wall, right? You know, kind of like that. You can do that, or you can do your free motion, you know, and but sometimes it's fun just to do the free motion, just to play around with it and do what you want to do. And if you want to practice, because I want to learn how to free motion quilt, then this is a good place to practice. So you can do all of that. And sometimes it's easier to free motion if you're trying to do a knee. You know, some of these, it's kind of harder. But if you have a machine that has the directional sewing, this could come in handy because you can sew forward, then side to side, then down, then other way. And you can just put it in your machine, you know, with your free arm and go around the whole thing using your directional stitches. So doing the by machine is really fun. Let's see. And she just shows some really fun ways to do patches, you know. This is this is called visible mending. Okay. So I have visible mending and I have creative stitches. And I think I put another I think I may have another book down there too. Joyful mending. Joyful mending. Yeah, it has not come in. Unless I'll check my box, maybe it came in because I know I, I ordered it, but our supply chain is still totally messed up. Um, so anyway, she shows you some ways if you have a slit, some things that you can do, some fun things that you can do around with the with the reverse applique or the other and and just fun things. You know, of course, if you really want to stand out, use your heavier threads with your heavier um, needles. And then also this one, what she did is she just did. She's just doing a patch, and she actually sewed around it and turned the edge under and then put a patch on the back. So it's more tailored than a lot of the other ones, you know, because these are they're leaving it ratty, where this one she's making it actually look, you know, nicer. So there's all kinds of fun things that you can do. So this book, and you can look at the book. I, I really liked it. It was just fun to check out all those things. Because I have um, some other stuff. That I was going to. What's the best size needle for the thicker threads? You know, like for for hand sewing or for machine. in the machine? You're going to use your top stitch. The top stitch. 90. Okay. Use your top stitch 90. It has the biggest hole. Okay. Okay. Top stitching needles have the largest hole, so they're the ones that you're going to use anytime you use your big your heavier threads. I'll use top stitching needles in my serger now, not in the cover stitch mode, but in the serging mode. I will use top stitch 90s with eight weight thread. Okay. Okay. You can actually get it through. You have to have those those needle threaders um, that we have out front there, the the right. loop needle threaders, those really long skinny things. You have to have those to get it through those needles, but yet they work. Okay. And so yeah, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, so these are some things that I did. This I did in the machine. Okay, so this these were all embroidered and this is a this is actually an a vintage um, corduroy that I had and then I put some suede, some suede that we had here in the back and 
I did this and so I just sewed around it and then I they trimmed it out so you need to have some really sharp scissors to do stuff like this and um, I was gonna pull up some things on the screen I'll have to show you that and let's see and this one this is a so this is also a reverse applique I can see I'm I'm rolling over all my cables here so this this is for sheer fabric and all I did is and if you did happen to have a hole in something you could do it and you could put this on top or you could put it behind and this this would wash away and so all I would see is the chiffon with this in the back so it's a shadow applique so I put it behind I did fuse this this was a fusible wash away and that way I could go around with a blanket stitch on my machine not by hand you know if you really wanted to do a little one but I do this by machine and then you'll wash this away and then you'll have that so you know if you have some holes and stuff you know think about how can I rescue something we don't have to throw everything away um, this is a jacket I did similar to the other one. I actually put the this so I have the yellow denim I put the blue denim as its facing pieces and then I sewed around it and I want it to fray and Then I just cut it away and I have thread someplace thread everywhere that Yes, I did so I made the jacket and but you know you could buy you could purchase a jacket and do the same thing just put this in behind it right. and then sew it so you can do that sometimes it's just easier to start with a flat piece of know, <laughs> then try and then deconstruct and reconstruct and so I just sewed it and I made these up in the IQ designer so I'm going to go over that a little bit to show you how you can do some fun things with that how you can work with that and let's see and another thing that I've done before because we can do this what about lace what now I actually made this jacket but what if you know I did something similar to this on a denim jacket of my daughter's and I actually put a piece of lace here and I put some lace in the back so if you had a hole why can't you use lace now this lace I actually did on my machine so this was a lace design I think this was probably um, a Sue box design but looking at it um, th that I purchased a long time ago and I had all these little motifs and you can see they're they're th just these little motifs then I put them on mesh mm -hmm. so I put them on the mesh and I free motioned with the smoke colored monofilament thread and I actually did a free motion with a zigzag so I did a zigzag free motion so make sure you have a bigger hold you can't use the little tiny circle one for this and it does a zigzag and I zigzagged them down to the mesh then I put the mesh on here I sewed around the outside edge cut it away and then and then I sewed it down a little bit better and you can see you know it's hard to see because I used the black very fine thread I used extremely fine thread mm -hmm. and sewed around it and I did do the sleeves of course before I sewed them up I did the sleeves and I actually have lace pockets these are pockets that were a design that I had purchased that are just lace and so I made pockets out of lace and I have a lace zipper because why wouldn't I just go all out with a and so I have a lace zipper so if you do have a hole on something why can't you put lace on it right. and do that I have a pair of jeans that I want I just I didn't get around to putting the lace on but I was going to do that because I see that all over the place capris and stuff that have the lace all along the leg another thing you can do is your cut work that I haven't you know I hadn't done cut work in a long time now this cut work is not all that great because <laughs> it's really hard to turn I've really anyway this is a pair of jeans that I had and the bottoms just get worn out mm -hmm. you know and so they got worn out so what I did is I cut it off and then I drew this this design on there and then I did and this is with um, eight way thread so this is heavy thread on here lightweight thread underneath and I just did a cut work design I did put 
fusible on the back to stabilize it. And then I just did my cut work design and then I just went around it and did that instead. So now I have something that's a little bit different. And you, of course, if you had it on your capris, that would be cute too to go around your cap or whatever. But you can do cut work. Now, have any of you done cut work before? So, okay, so I'm going to talk about how do you do cut work. Um, you know, because they do have some cut work designs in the machines, um, and we can design our own cut work. This one I just did old school way because I was going to say, you know, not everybody has embroidery machines. And this, I would have had to have opened up my jeans to have done this. I wouldn't have been able to hoop it. So that's why I said, well, you know, we, we need to know all the different ways to do stuff. We can't do everything by pushing a button. We kind of would like to. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could just like, yeah, make dinner. Yeah. But anyway, let's see, I'm putting stuff out here. No, coffee, coffee or wine, one of the two. Yeah. Can you imagine if a machine came up with a coffee? Oh, you, so, you need co so you need cup holders. Is this what you're telling me? Well, you know the little place that goes in front here? You fill that with M&Ms. Yeah. That goes, the M&Ms go in there, but I'm supposed, oh, these could be your cup holders, I suppose. You know, for safety, you know. Just, uh... You guys are bad. Oh, my goodness. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the cut work, and then I'm going to move over to the serger and talk about using the serger to do some fun things as I make a mess of everything. Does everybody have a serger? Yes. Mm -hmm. You gotta have everything in your arsenal, right? Because they're 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 best they're best buds. They're best buds. Um, yes, and and I, I love I love also having the cover stitch ability with mine too. Um, if you were looking to buy that Euphoria that we had, it was it's interesting because all these people just want the Euphoria. You'd see it online. They're all waiting for the Euphoria. They want the Euphoria. Couldn't find it. I'm like, well, we got one here. And it sat for, I don't know, was it a month that we had it? Which really surprised me. Then all of a sudden, one day, three people called, and Raymond goes, first one here gets it. They're so they're fighting over it. I'm like going, guys, it was here for a while. <laughs> of course, I kept telling him, it's like, just put it in that little car outside. He goes, oh, your car? I'm like, yeah, just, just put it in my car. I'll open the trunk for you. It didn't work. It didn't work. No, he said, no. He goes, I know what your car looks like. <sighs> Almost got one. But um, so anyway, so let's talk about how can we make our own design like on this this one or or the the oak leafy one. So let's do this. So we're going to come here. I'm going to see if I can get on the screen. I've got too many cameras everywhere. Like I gotta turn this one. I gotta turn that one. Okay, kind of, sort of. Now, hopefully I can see my screen. I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to go down to the IQ Designer. As it's knocking things over, you know. I know, I hit my glue. I hit every, you know. At home, I make sure I don't put anything behind there. I tell you, and then when you put the really big hoop on, you got to be really careful. Because, of course, I've never hit the wall. Or, yeah. No, my biggest problem is that I'll put the big hoop on, and then I turn my chair around, and then all of a sudden I'm going, what is bumping me? I look over going, oh, you're kidding me. Because now my design's all out of whack. You're like, oh, that was just not good. Anyway, in your IQ designer, they have over here, they're called stamps. And they have all these different shapes. So we have these shapes, which are closed shapes. And you can put a lot of them together. They have, oh, I want these guys, they have more of our open shapes, and you can see that some of them may look familiar. There's some little flowers or this little guy right there. They have those shapes, and then they also have these other open shapes, too, that you can do. Or you can bring in your own. You can draw your own or bring in your own vector file or something like that. But with something like this, this is similar to what I have on here. Of course, this is a little bit different. This is, I used some wiggly squiggly ones on this one, so I had had those in, but I have just a circle, and then I have these kind of teardroppy looking things in there. But this will show you basically what you can do. So you can either draw your own design, bring your own design in, 
or use some that are already in there. So if you can see this, hopefully you can kind of sort of see that. Actually, I was playing with my machine right before coming over. Mm -hmm. And just to, um, I, I was just playing with, um, I call them templates and whatnot. Uh huh. And, uh, and this is what um, I was playing with. I forgot the woman's ears. Excuse me. But, um. Oh, nice. Now, that was done mostly with uh, stamps. Oh, okay. And, and then I kind of like drew a little bit on my own. Uh huh. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. With the stamps and the, the, oh. the shape, it's all on the, the stamps there. Yeah, it, you know, if you start looking at these stamps and, the stamps and think of them, um, you're going, what if I turn it upside down? What if I turn it sideways? What if I only need the top half of it and I can delete the bottom half? You start looking at the stamps, you know, outside the box and you can get some really fun things going on there. So this one, you know, we just have those little lines going around there. And this is going to be really difficult, guys. So just, just <laughs> hang on. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I forgot when I brought it in here, I'm going to change this up to, let's say I want to do a triple stitch. So I'm going to do it. Okay, so I came up here and I did it to a triple stitch. I say, okay, I'm going to hit my little bucket because I want to change them all. So I hit that one, that one, that one. So now they're all a triple stitch. I'm going to go next. I'm going to change this. And I usually put mine in millimeters because 0 0.08 inches doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I know what 2.5 is. I know that I'm going to change this up. Uh, 0 0.120 is around a 3. I know that because I want it to be, actually I want it to be even bigger. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because I'd rather have a nice big stitch. And you can see on, on this one I did a, a really big stitch on, on that little, uh, it's not really an oak leaf, whatever it is. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say okay. Then I'm going to set it. It's going to turn it into stitches. Okay, I hope you guys got that. Really complicated, right? How easy is that to do something using the stamps? That's all I did. And it's going to sew around it, and after it's sewn around it, I just cut it out. It's not a big deal. Or you can do it the opposite way. Put this on top, sew around it, and then trim around the outside edge and just leave it, leave it ratty. Now, if you wanted it, let's say I wanted to do this, but I wanted it to be a satin stitch around it, right? Okay, so what I would do is I would leave that there. I would have made it just a single run, but I'm going to add to it. I'm going to add. I'm going to go to the IQ Designer. Since I didn't change anything, <laughs> yay, I can just pull that same one up again. I'll do that. I'll say okay. I'll put it on there. It is as a zigzag. I'm going to say next. It's going to show the zigzag. I'm going to make this a lot wider. Am I dense? Oh, I should have I should have linked them. Sorry, I should have linked them and made them all a lot wider. So now it's gonna do them all at the same time. Nice. Okay. And then I'm going to set it. And so now what I have is I have the first one, which of course is your placement in your cut. Put it on there, sews it on, you trim it away, and then you do your second one and it covers up that raw edge. Really not hard. Okay, very easy to do. Now, cut work would be similar to this. I would have my trimming away part, trim it away. Just don't trim away your backing, like your wash away backing. Okay, and then I would probably use a wash away on it, put it on there, then do it around the outside edge, then wash it all away, and then you'll have, and then you'll have that open. Okay, so you can do a cut work in a very similar way. Alrighty, so that's how we, because I think most of you have different IQ designers and, and stuff that you can do. Now, what about our free, what about if we're going to do our cut work, um, where's my jeans now? If you're going to do cut work here, so what I do with this is when you're going to do cut work by hand, old school way, the first thing I do is I go around, so I drew out my design, 
and then I sewed around it with a zigzag. Actually, not a zigzag, and it, the Z stitch. So do you guys know the difference between a zigzag and a Z stitch? Yeah. And I don't have my marking board up there. Let's see if I have a... I forgot I was going to use my use the whiteboard. So, and sorry for those that are online. I don't know if I can get this all, all the way out here. Oh, and I do have some pictures to show you too. So, a zigzag. When I'm doing any kind of cut work or applique on my machine. Let's see, I need to pull this back a bit. A zigzag is always coming forward. So it goes zig and zag and zig and zag. Okay, so it's always coming forward. A Z stitch goes across and then comes forward and across and comes oh. forward. Okay, so when you make this denser, it covers better. Mm. Okay, so it's a better stitch to use. Now, when you're going to do your cut work, so if I'm going to go around, and this is, I think I'm feeling like what left-handers usually feel like, right? The first thing I'm going to do, and you could either do a straight stitch or you could do a zigzag, um, Richelieu lines. Do you guys know what Richelieu is? It's when you have the little bars inside. If you've ever seen a cut work, so they have a little area like this, and then they have the lines in it, those are Richelieu bars. Okay, so if you're going to do the Richelieu bars, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to sew with the straight stitch. You're going to go down and back and make sure you go all the way out so it's going to be covered up so it anchors it because you're going to cut everything away from there. Because you will have gone around here, you will have cut that away, and you're going to do your Richelieu bars. So about three, four times straight stitches, probably about two millimeter long. Go over that because there's going to be nothing behind it. Okay, But then what you're going to do is around the outside edge, you're going to do a zigzag. Not a very tight zigzag. I would say about a 2.0 wide and probably a 3 long or so, something like that. You're just going to go around it. And that then you can trim everything away. It's just stabilizing it. Then you're going to come back and you're going to do the real one that's going to cover everything up. And, of course, with the Richelieu bars, it's going to anchor those sides that you did it. You're probably going to want it to be about a 4 wide and about a Actually, this is probably going to be about a two point. And then you're probably going to want it to be around a four length. You want it really dense. And that all depends on the thread you're using. So you'll have to play around with it because you want it to be dense enough, not so dense where you're going to get all wonky, but dense enough that it covers up all those raw edges. And that's how you're going to do it. And yes, I do put stabilizer behind it. And now that they have the wash away, I remember when I first started doing it, they didn't have these all these cool stabilizers that they have now. So using a nice wash away stabilizer, especially maybe the fusible one, it's really nice because it stays there. It's not it's not going to shift on you, and that way it gives you all that stabilization to do. Because I do it on heirloom stuff. I don't. Uh, my heirloom stuff is not going to have this on the back of it. It's just going to be by itself. So you're going to do it. But for this, of course, I wanted a little bit more stability. So that's how you do your cut work. I wanted to I wanted to talk about another blooper I did. I forgot about this. I'm going to change my input here. Let's see. OK, so this is a quilt that I did a long time ago. So I made this cute little quilt. These are all farmyard animals in there. Okay. So, and each one of these, so each one of these little, little blocks is a different animal. There's pigs and sheep and cows and all kinds of stuff. And when I was quilting it, I quilted it with you know, if it was on the geese, I had geese, pigs, I had pigs and everything. So everything was going along really great, right? All, we're all happy and everything's going along great. Until one of these, I think it's this one, is what I think it was. And I'm going to blow it up so you can see it. So, and if I move it around, I think it was that one down there. So it's kind of far into the quilt. 
So it's kind of this weird random flower. It's either that one or this one. I know it's on the geese. I think it was this one. Okay, I know this has never happened to you, right? You're in the middle of quilting. The thread gets caught up here, pulls it, your needle breaks, and your machine keeps going. And what happens when you have a broken needle? You get a hole. You get a really bad hole. And of course, these machines are going 100 miles an hour. So by the time you run over to it to turn it off, it's already done a lot of damage. And so I actually had a hole in this quilt. And I just sat there, and I just, uh, you know, what do you do? You just sit there going, OK, I'm trying not to cry. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm making it for this baby that's due, you know. And so then I was looking at the cows. And if you look at these cows, these cows have little flowers in their mouths. <laughs> I went, oh, I can make. 3D flowers. So I went and I made 3D flowers. You can see. So I started making all these flowers. And of course, that one had to be there. But on the back of the quilt, what I did is because it did go all the way through and it just totally shredded this one little area, I got some of the fabric and I ooched it up inside and I used and I fused it on there. And I had this fusible powder. So I fused it on on the back because there's nothing else you yeah, can do. Powder? Yeah, there's a there's a fusible powder. It's by Bonash. And so I put it on there and I fused it on the back. I'm going, okay, it's busy enough. I hope they won't be able to see that there's an issue there. So I fused that on there. And then on the front, I'm going, there's going to be a flower right there. <laughs> right? It's going to be right there. So I made all these flowers. Now, I actually did those in, in the hoop because I did the flower. And so I just had it sew out, you know, right sides together, did it. And then, you know, turn the petals. Uh, each of the petals were separate. And, you know, you have a lot of stamps, so you could do it with that. And I had that. And then it's a circle. Okay, we got a circle. We got that down. And so I did those all in the hoop, and I just turned them inside out, and then I sewed them down. And I just sewed all these little, they're all 3D flowers, and I just randomly put them around, just trying to make it look like it's supposed to be like that. And, of course, you know, they're just like, oh, we love cute with the flowers on and everything. I'm like, oh, this great idea with the flowers. But what do you do, right? I mean, what do you do besides sit there and cry? So that was one of my, my little things. Now, this was something that I found at Target just this week. I was there. I was looking at jeans because I thought, oh, I need a new pair of jeans to replace the pair that I cut up. And everything is shredded there, just so you know. Don't even waste your time. If you don't like shredded jeans, don't even go there. Anyway, this I thought was so interesting is they actually have this strip of, and it, it is kind of like, oops, it is kind of like a lace, or not a lace, but a ribbon, but it is a satin stitch, and it is stitched, so it's like they cut, cut it and put this on there, and they satin stitch on both sides. So one side they sewed into the seam, and the other side, this is just a satin stitch. If you turn it inside out, you can see the back side of this, of this strip, and they put it all the way down the side of the pants, so they're all the way down the side. So, you know, if you've gained a little weight and you need it a little bit bigger, just, you can do that. Or you have a hole and you want to cover up the hole, or you just want to do it, you could do something like that. So you have, have this, this thing, and of course I'm looking at it going, hmm, okay. I, I debated about buying them and bringing them and showing them and then returning them. I thought, no, I shouldn't do that. So anyway, um, you can do that. I know that I was making these dresses for my daughters years ago because we love sergers. They got knives, just, just so you know, they have knives. And I was sewing, and I was sewing fast, and so I'm sewing this dress. And, you know, sometimes things get caught up underneath. And, and so I caught it up underneath and I took it out. I'm like, oh, no, no, a big deal. You know, I'm taking it out. But it was a big deal because it cut it. Mm -hmm. So I had a cut in the back of a dress. A cut. So guess what? Lace is always my friend. So I had some insert lace insertion. So I just cut, you know, I just cut it, put a lace insertion, measured over the other side, cut it, put lace insertion in. Ta-da! And, you know, I just, I think my daughter has that dress. because I'm going, do I have that? I can show what I did. Because things happen. And so you have to, instead of just sitting there crying, you've got to say, okay, what can I do? Wouldn't it work really well with a little boy? But little girls, you can always put lace and ruffles and froofy things on there, you know, because we, we can do that. I have, because I have some other fun books, too. These are, these are some old books, but, you know, we can do the, 
Sewing with Whimsy. I think you might still be like, these are Martha Poland books. We can always do stuff like that on little girls' dresses. Like I said, little boys, not so much. Um, of course, our yo-yos. Judy was laughing at me about my yo-yo. I brought my yo-yos in again. Um, you can always do yo-yos. This one I did, I was doing a cute little thing on the back of a jacket, and so I did my applique, and then I did my yo-yo actually in the hoop, the yo-yo in the hoop. Yo-yos are great for covering up bloopers. So you can do yo-yos. Um, I do have this one. It's called Jazzy Jeans. This is an old, old book. Same sort of thing. Some of these things I look at go, oh, yeah, you can tell this is old. But, you know, they have some fun ideas. Once again, you know how to cut up your jeans and make it into something else, because sometimes you may just want to do that. Okay, I'll just make it into a skirt. They do have their embroidery and all kinds of fun stuff on there, too, that they did. And then they have Get the Most from Your Clothes, another one of these things where they're just, you know, bell bottoms are back in again. So slitting the sides and putting in different fabric. So putting in different fabric. You can even put in lace or mesh or something like that just to, you know, update it a bit. I, I laughed about the ones with the bands on the bottom. I don't know about you, but like I said, when I was growing up, we, we didn't have a whole lot of money. My dad was a high school teacher. Teachers don't make a whole bunch of money. And we got one pair of pants a year, and you grow, right? So I remember Mom would put bands on the bottom of our pants, which was terribly embarrassing. And, you know, but, right, what do you do? That's all you can do. So when I look at them now, you know, I have memories of, ah, uh, going to school and people going, oh, look at you, you know. But um, just all kinds of fun stuff that you can do. So this is just this is just a funny book you can look at for ideas. Um, but they have all kinds of fun stuff that you can do because that's we're all about redoing stuff. Um, another thing that you can do, and this is one of the things I did, is what if you do need something that's a little bit longer, or you just want to replace, you know, a worn hem because a lot of my jeans you can see are kind of raggedy. I got to figure out what to do about raggedy on the on the back side. So, um, but this is what I did is I used a two thread. I actually used the ladder stitch on my serger and my really heavy thread. So this is actually a different band. And I, I sewed this, I did the cover stitch in white so you could see it. Because otherwise I'd do it in dark blue so you'd never see it. So I did it so you can see that this was made with the belt looper on the cover stitch machine. And then all I did is I just sewed it on with something fun like that. And this is the wrong side of that two thread. This is the right side of that ladder stitch. So you can have either look. You can either have this look or this look. Of course, you don't have to use really heavy things, but this is kind of fun, you know, to add to the bottom. It wouldn't be quite as embarrassing, but um, especially if you get the same kind of color jeans. So I was going to show you how you could thread your machine up for a two thread. I have threads everywhere here. Two thread ladder stitch. Tell you between cables everywhere and threads everywhere, it's very dangerous back here. And I try so hard not to trip and unplug everything. Drag my okay, let's see if I can get this and then trying to sew that's a whole nother ball game. Promise that this camera gets in the way. And I try and do my other camera. Okay. How to do it so you guys can see it. I think you might have a different component of this. Oh, thank y'all. Gotta go back to HDMI 1. I wish I could go backwards. There we go. Let's see. See if we can see it. Okay. 
So hopefully I'll be able to see without that other camera getting too much in the way. So what I'm going to do first is, and this is a little bit farther out, I'm going to take my heavier thread. I'm only going to use heavy thread in the looper. For right now, I'm not going to do it in both the looper and the needle, which I did on these guys. You can see I did the heavy thread on the looper and the needle using a top stitch 90 in the needle. Um, I'm just going to put it in the looper. So I do my lower looper as normal because we got to love that. And then what you're going to do with your upper looper, and it sh will be on your cheat sheet. Of course, I copied my cheat sheet because I make notes all over mine, and I have mine so I can move it out. I'm using the blanket stitch, and I make notes about some of these. One of the things, a two-thread flat lock wide, I have a note. They tell you to use it in the A stitch mode. I use it in the D stitch mode, okay, because it makes that one looper looser. But I'm going to do the the blanket and ladder stitch. If you look at them, you say, why do they have two of them? They're threaded exactly the same. So I don't know why they have two different ones. But I'm going to use the blanket or ladder stitch. And what you're going to do is for your needle, you're going to put your needle down. And this is going to be my needle thread. God, this is a... And I'm going to put it down in my upper looper. Okay? And the other thing, too, is I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this auxiliary looper here. Do you see this little gizzy? I'm going to flip it over and in there because I'm only going to be using a needle and a lower looper. Okay? So this is going to go down. I have it already in threading mode. I'm going to push it down in here and thread it up like that. Now, it, you know, it can't go through here because I've got it blocked up, and I need it to go up to my needle. So I'm going to open it up, and my thread is down here, and I'm going to grab my thread right from there. It's going to come back up. This one is a little bit different from mine. goes through there, up and over, and now I'm going to put it into my needle. What? It doesn't have a thread around it. <laughs> okay, thread it. Got to Okay, thread and these are not my good tweezers. These, I grabbed these and I don't know why I grabbed these. Okay. So I have that threaded. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my lace foot. Okay, my lace foot has a bar here. And the reason I have that, and I just realized I don't have my, to do this, I will, I guess I will just use this one. I'm going to get some fabric. You know, I thought I had all my stuff together, and I guess I didn't. I'm going to just put on two pieces of fabric. We're just going to cut it. Because we're going to sew two pieces together on the fold. So they're both going to be folded. So we're going to pretend like this is the bottom of the pair of pants and we have one thing there. And I wanted to, the reason I'm going to use my lace foot is because it has this bar here, it's going to keep me, can you see that? It's going to keep me from getting into that knife blade. Okay. And I'm going to make this as wide as possible. I'm going to put this down to a three. And hopefully, I have it all threaded right. And we're just going to put it in like this. Put them both together. Shove them in there. And I'm going to make sure my machine, my it lowers on that side. And I'm going to make it so it's that needle just barely goes into my fabrics like this. So when you put it through, it's easy to go at an angle. Make sure you keep your fabric straight. And this is on the A. Look at all my little notes. And I'm just coming and it's just barely catching. Because the, the if you just barely catch it, it's going to lay flatter. 
and Judy's going to have to redo this. Okay, so you see now mine is, it's all loopy. Yay, it's all loopy. Okay, because then I'm going to grab my two pieces and I'm going to pull them. And I made it so I can, you can actually see it. It's more like faggoting now. Do you see how nice that is? And so one side, if you wanted this side with the heavier thread, you can see the heavier thread there. The other side is just a ladder. So on these guys, I put them so they were, they're butted right up against each other. So they're right up against each other. So you have to play around with your foot to get it where you want it. This one, I pulled it farther apart. So it's barely catching it. Mm -hmm. But how fun is that, that you could do something like that? So either have them right up against each other and with heavy thread in the needle and heavier thread, because I use heavier thread. This is, this is probably a 12-way thread. But if you used an eight-way thread in there and used a really heavy thread, an eight-way thread in your needle, how fun would that be? Totally different look, okay? And so, of course, with the cover stitch, you can do lots of fun things. So here's with the cover stitch, using the heavier threads and the cover stitch. Say I wanted to put a patch down on something. You could use your cover stitch. And this one, I have the cover stitch, and I kept flipping it over and flipping it over. For those of you that went to that class with, with us, um, you know, so it makes it look like a, a plaid. And you can keep doing that and just playing around with it. This is what my denim one looked like. So if I wanted to do this on my denim, you know, just using this is with the variegated thread. And so you could do a whole patchwork sewing up there with your cover stitch. Um, so I am going to ask you, how would you like me to show you how to use the, the foot that does this, the, the attachment? Yes. 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 You want you want me to do that? Okay. So I'm going to have to switch the machine up, which is fine. But these are, there's two attach, you can get two different attachments uh, for your belt looper. This is the one and a half inch, and this is the three quarter inch one. Three quarter inch one is, makes really nice straps, but they're a little too small for this. But I want you to see that they have two different ones. And then this one is your wider one, and this is going to do this size. Now, if I'm going to make something out of fabric, I cut it a little bit wider than they tell you to. I think they tell you to do it like one and three quarters or something. I cut it about one and seven eighths, a little bit wider. If you're doing with the denim, don't do that. It's too thick. Okay? So we want to be able to do that. And I'm going to, I'll take this thread out. Now that's threaded all, all crazy. We're going to, oops. I think maybe I will leave it all crazy. Oh, no, please don't. <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, because Judy was, she was sewing one day. She was like, what's wrong with this? Like, oh, well, because maybe, <laughs> just maybe somebody went and put it in a totally different mode, mm -hmm. and it wasn't me that time. Oh. Usually I'm the one that puts it into really crazy I modes. I couldn't get one of the loopers to go down in the hole. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He came out and said, it wasn't locked all the way, so that's. Oh, uh-huh, because of course, you know, I actually haven't been messing with this machine for a while, so, you know, because <laughs> usually I'm messing around with it. Okay, so I'm going to switch this over to a cover stitch. So the first thing I need to do is I need to lower my upper looper because it's got to go down. Okay, so I have my lower looper down. I'm going to take this foot off because I don't need that foot on there, so I'm going to just throw that in there. I'm going to take off my... This is for serging only, and I'm going to put on the table, because this is going to go up here. One thing that I do do is I do move my knife blade all the way over. Even though you're going to drop your knife, I do move it all the way over, because that moves this whole area. And it will push it out. If I, if I leave it out, you can see that it, it will push this table out just a wee bit, and then it wobbles a bit on me. So I want it in as much as possible and I actually tape mine down also on my machine just to keep it from moving for whatever reason okay so I'm going to put it in to our cover stitch mode which means we need a uh, something in our cover stitch I'm going to put this in here 
This comes down and goes this way. This is keeping me on my toes since I, and then up and over. Put it into your threading mode. Turn this until everybody locks into place. I can feel a knot on here, so I'm going to do that. Of course, you can do this with your fancy threads. I'm going to stick that in there, making sure that I got enough. So that's that. And then I'm going to, oh, you know what? They don't have needles. Um, let's see. I need a... Nope, actually, here's a needle in here. Because you have to, when you go to the cover stitch mode, I have my um, my top stitching needles with me, but I cannot use those needles with this. I need You need to use your serger needles when you are in cover stitch mode. Because they have, if you don't know about needles, needles have cutouts and and all kinds of stuff in them and th it has these guys have the serger needles have a scarf on the front side and the back side and because you have this this chain looper that's going around the needle it has to be able to catch the thread front and back and if you use a regular needle it won't you'll get skip stitches so a lot of times people say well I put it in and it's like but you have to have the right needle so in serging mode it doesn't matter because of how the loopers are. It will catch all of that. So you can use your top stitching, your top stitching ones for that, but you cannot in your cover stitch mode. I'm going to put that down, and you this have to goes. Have the special needle for cover stitch. You, say? you have to have the serger needle, the the EL needle, which you probably have. Okay, so it's just one of those things um, that you just have to be aware of that. Did I, I didn't get you up and over. Okay, knowing which one goes to which one. I have a, one of those little tomatoes with the needles in it. And what I did is I went, because I could never remember what needle I had in my machine. And I'm always changing things up. You know, I'm sewing on denim, then I'm sewing on a knit, then I'm sewing on whatever. So I got the tomato, and you know how it has the little the little slices in it already. So I used a Sharpie. This is a really high-tech method, just so you know. So I used a Sharpie, and I put top 90, top 80, SUK, which is the knit ones, SUK 80, SUK 90, and then just the EL 80, EL 90. So I always know what is in my machine. And then, and I put a pin in it, so I have a pin in the one. So when I take those needles out, I move the pin to that little section of my tomato, and I know that that is the thread that I have in there. Very high tech, I know. I know there's some really cool things that you can do and put on there. I went, I can use a tomato. Um, you know, it's like, I have a tomato, I can do that. So that's what I did, is I put mine in there and just did that. And I'm going to thread this up. Now, the other thing with your cover stitch also is your serger, you can just start whenever to sew. With cover stitch, you have to start on fabric. Okay, so you have to have your sacrificial fabric that you just leave by your machine that you just stick in there. Okay, get my needles threaded. So I have all my needles threaded. I got that locked down. I put this out of there. I got that threaded up. And this guy, ooh, let's see if I have screws in here. It's nice when a plan comes together. Okay, you should have little screws that come with your machine. I'll leave this off of there. Okay, so you have your two little screws. You have this... So I'm going to put this on there just so I know where this is. Oops. Get that on there. Get my thread where I want my thread to be. And this is going to go right here. And you're going to screw it on there. And what I did is that there's a bar. If you look inside these guys, there's a bar. 
And so I went and I put with the Sharpie, that's the center of this thing. And so I know that since I'm using these needles, the feet have little markings on them. That means the middle is right there. So I'm going to move that over and line, this will line up with that. And you can also line these up. They do have screws here, so I can move it forward and backward as well as side to side. So if I needed this closer to my foot, I could do that as well. Okay, so I have this. I'm actually going to stick a piece of fabric in there to get my cover stitch started before I do this, making sure that everything is okay. Okay, so my cover stitch is working. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric. I'm going to cut it so I kind of sort of have kind of a little, little V there. Shove it in, and you can see it's coming out on this side. I'm going to bring my needles up. And I'm going to pull it. And this is a little stretchy, so it'll be interesting to see how well this works. But you see how it goes from edge to edge. If it's a little bit big, make a tent. Because um, my um, regular ones, I cut a little bit wider, so I make a little bit of a tent in here. But you want it to curl underneath. It's not going to fix itself. If it's not rolling right, it's never going to roll right. And I'm just going to go along like this and make sure it's like that. Whew, okay, that was really rough, wasn't it? Okay, so there's there's my little thing. How hard is that, right? Okay, so if you don't have these, they're really fun to have. Get one. Get one. Yes, and you know, and this one isn't exactly in the center. I would have messed with this. I would have ooched it over just a wee bit. But as long as it's covering up that part in the back, I'm okay. And so now I could put this on the bottom of a pair of jeans and do what I did with the other one, right? Using my blanket stitch, put it on there and make a band for the bottom. So we got that. So all kinds of fun stuff that you can do and you know using your fancy threads like the one the gold thread is the floss thread. So you can use that. I have my whole bin of bin O thread. And because a lot of these, some like the dazzle and the razzle dazzle I actually used as hand needle, you know, using the hand needles. And I used it because this has a little bit of sparkle in there. Um, so with your hand needles, I you can order some of the John James. Um, Judy and I, we laugh. We're snobs about certain things in life. One of the things we're snobs about are hand needles because we laugh about that. We're like, yes. I actually have some that I gave my granddaughter one. I might be taking it back, though, if she loses it. I have some very special needles. These are called Millwards. They don't make them anymore. I got these from an antique store. So these are my favorite needles of all times. But since they don't manufacture them anymore, a close second is a John James. And, you know, so a lot of times people will just buy whatever. But if you've used a nice hand needle and then you go to a not-so-nice hand needle, there is a difference. You know, there really is. Just like we know what silk feels like, we know what yucky cotton feels like, right? There's there's a difference. So um, you can, if you want some, I have them on the list. We can order some. They're the bigger eye needles for the bigger thread, so you can do some hand sewing, but it makes a difference. I'm really picky about my lengths and my thicknesses and my size of my, I have, I have a lot of needles. Let's just put it that way, and depending on what I'm doing. We had a gal come in, and she was so cute. She came in, and she wanted a needle that was slightly curved because she had a needle that was slightly curved. And I'm going, no, the only really curved needles are those big upholstery ones that I can never get to go right there. They always flip on me. And she's like, no, no, it was really thin. And then I said, oh, you know what? I said, what it was is it was a needle that you used it so much, it got the curve of your thumb and fingers on it. I said, you're going to have to get a new needle, and you're going to have to do that. So we bought her some John James. And I said, because my needles are like that too, I have a lot of hand needles where I do a lot of the smaller embroidery and they're slightly curved. And they're curved because of how I use them and they got that way naturally and now they're perfect. I love them for doing any kind of hemming or anything like that. 
I also have, I put some needle nannies down there. If you don't know what a needle nanny is, a needle nanny is a thing, it's a magnet with another magnet, so you can put it on your shirt, and so it has magnets on both sides. Or what they really used to do it is when they did quilting, you know, you'd have your big quilts on your quilt frames. They would have that magnet on the back, magnet on the front, and then you just put your needle on it, and you don't lose your needles. Because how many of us stick our needles in our shirts and we forget about it? We do that way too much. I ha we have a couple of these guys. These are kind of fun. These are these are actually uh, a little metal case, a little metal tin, and it does have a magnet in it down here. Now you could get a set another magnet to put it on there, but you can just put it on your tin and put your needles on there, and then stick it in your tin and close it up, and then you have your your needles. Because I'm I'm all about magnets. All it takes is my little three-year-old grandson to jump on the couch and throw the needles everywhere. We were picking up needles the other day, and so I brought my granddaughter. Once again, she's getting all this stuff. She's like, oh, you're buying my old clothes. Got her the magnetic pin cushion. I'm like, we're picking up the pins like this because your ninja brother wanted to ninja stuff. So that's some just some fun things. Now, the last thing I was going to talk about, I'm going to have to turn it back over to this now. Let's see come to my designs is these are called the pickle pie designs I like pickle pie designs if I can find my peas as it's loading I don't know why sometimes it seems like it takes forever to load pickle pie there we go and my needle needle notebooks there we go. I'm going to pull up the instructions because I want to talk to you about the instructions. This is an in the hoop thing because I do like the in the hoop thing. So um, these are, so this is a small one. This is the large one. And they have little plastic things so you can put your needles in. So I can put my little, my little things and needles in. Unless, of course, you're like me and you buy and buy the packages of 100 and then they don't fit in there. But, you you know, this is a good for traveling for me, I think, that that. So this is a small one. They have a medium one that has a, has a little bit less, and this is the bigger one and has all of these in there. Okay. So then I also, I did another one because I, I mean, how could I resist? I had this fold over elastic. You can't get this anymore, but I had the polka dot one, so I had to use the polka dots because I had to and then you know everything is polka dotted but anyway so this is another one of these and so this is an in the hoop design no nope, I have it at the end don't I okay let's start at the beginning I think I was going through it one thing I do like about the pickle pie designs is I think her her the way she tells you to do things is really is good she has pictures and so it's nice and so she talks about that now one of the things that I wanted to talk about because this has happened a couple times to me and so this is for everybody for those of you that have embroidery machines you need to read what it tells you you can do and when you purchase an embroidery design it is not yours to sell it's not yours to loan or give away or anything there are copyright laws because I had just recently a couple times people said oh I'll just let you borrow my design no 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 you can't do that. That is illegal. You know, if I want it, I will need to purchase it myself. But here, this one, she talks about you may stitch up to 500 of the finished product and sell it like on your Etsy shop or at a thing. So make sure you read these. Sometimes they say absolutely nothing. You can't do anything. It's just for your own personal use. Sometimes they'll say, oh, yeah, you can make them just say you use my design. But I can't go and take this and change the N on it and then say, oh, it's now mine, and resell it. No, that is piracy. So make sure you know your copyright laws. I'm a big fanatic about copyright laws. So that's my little soapbox for the day. But anyway, they have all the different ones, and they talk about everything that you have to do. It says, this is what's going to happen. This is the placement. This is this. This is that tells you everything you have to cut out, the size of everything. And her sizes are good. You know, you don't have to worry about it. It is a t you have to hoop it twice. So you have the, you do the outside part first. And this one I put in some fusible fleece to give it a little bit more oomph. This one, it, it just has, um, 
you know, like a no-show mesh in it or something like that. So you could do it either way. Now, the biggest problem that I had is cutting out my vinyl. I don't know. How many of you have ever tried to cut vinyl? I, it gets lost. I can't find it. So I have vinyl and I can't find it. So um, what I did with this, what I did with my first one, I have I have a big roll of vinyl and I had it rolled up, but it got kind of wrinkly. I don't know if yours ever gets wrinkly. Mine was a little bit wrinkly. So what I did is I, I cut... I cut everything out, and then to get the wrinkles out of it, I put it on my ironing board, and then I put, you know, a, a pressing cloth on top of it, and I pressed it just to get it nice and flat. Well, what I didn't realize is that it, it kind of shrunk it, so one of my things is too short. These guys are the right length, but these guys are too short. But, oh, okay. So I cut out a big piece next time when I did this one. I cut out a big piece, and then I pressed it flat, let it cool, put it down and I actually put masking tape on it because one is when I cut it then it everything shifts on me and then I have a really hard time seeing where did I just cut because it's clear so I actually you can see where I I put tape on it so I I tape it down the top part I tape down the bottom part so they're stuck down and then I actually do a part in the middle just to hold everything together and that way when I cut it I know nothing's moving and I can actually use the markings on my cutting board which of course I don't use the markings on my cutting board when I'm cutting out for quilting I use my ruler but for this one I'm I can't see well enough so I just cut them out and they just have to be close enough so I'm not you know lining anything up and this way I leave the tape on so I can actually see them because I know that they're there on my cutting board and I can't find them because they're clear. So I use that and then I just pull that off when I'm doing it. Another thing that they tell you to do is when you're doing these, when you're doing the last part because it's it's going to sew around the whole outside, is she tells you to put a water soluble topper over the whole thing. And so, you know, I've been making them, so I'm, I'm not paying any attention to my directions anymore, right? I know what I'm doing. And I forgot that step. Luckily, I had just started it up. It had just started sewing, and it starts sewing down this way. And because what what happens is it gets caught underneath here. It started sewing, and I caught it right. Did one stitch into the plastic, and it was the foot was underneath, but it hadn't pulled it up yet. Whew. Okay, so I have to remind myself. Look at my directions anyway. Remind myself I have to put the topper on. And you put the topper on and then it, you don't have any problems. And it just sews it all up and you just pull it away. And you have that. So this, these are the needle notebooks software if you want to do that. They're kind of fun. So if you need little things to give us gifts or whatever. And there's also the, um, this is just some stuff that I had some different colors that I had but on the list down at the bottom I forgot about that the fold over elastic and I have uh, this is it's a fold over elastic by by Annie's so if you want some I can show you the colors so these are all the colors they come in I didn't want to put it down there because I did all the colors for all the all the hands or the pearl crown or the pearl cotton on there but if you want if you're interested in any of the fold over elastic just just come see me after class and you can write down and say oh yeah I want the apple green the blast off blue and the Tahiti which is purple in my book but you know because I would always know that Tahiti is purple right but anyway so you can pick out your colors if you want them I think I went. Did I, I think I went over everything in the on the list now. Yes. Felt little baby. Little. Sharp scissors, fusible interfacing, and any questions on anything. And then the Eleganza pearl cotton thread. They're in the ball, so it looks more like you would buy if you were going to crochet. But they work really well for hand sewing, and you can actually put them through you know your loopers and stuff on your serger if you want to do that try to show you all the colors because of course we all know what um, canyon walls is right it's, it's a brown dandelion oh that's supposed to be dandelion puff that's supposed to be a pea oh that's a good one dandelion puff is a kind of a whitish color yes well how would you put them through your if they're in a ball how do you put them through the loopers on you just let them sit you just put the ball down here you could even put a ball in a bowl Put a bowl, put it in there, just pull it up and over. Wow. You know, if you've ever had problems with thread, and I know this sounds really funny for those of you that are new to this, if you don't know, if you have problems with thread, 
you take it off your spindle and you throw it. And you just let it just go on the floor. And unless you have cats that are going to attack it, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Or dogs that will go and eat it. Yeah, you'll be fine. But that's a lot of times it just needs to relax more. So if you're having problems with thread, you just take it and you just toss it. And then it'll just unwind itself and it'll just kind of bounce around and do that. But you can put, since they're in the balls, you know, you can just put it in a little bowl so it doesn't roll off your table. Just put it in there and just put it down behind your machine and just bring it back, it back up and over. It can go in either looper and you could actually get it. You should be able to get it through a top stitching needle, a 90 top stitching needle. So not in cover stitch mode. So you wouldn't be using it in cover stitch mode in the needles. You could use it in cover stitch in your cover looper. So like that ladder stitch. The ladder stitch. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Because this thread, if you look at this thread, this is through the needle. And look at this. I mean, this is, if you've ever seen the floss, I mean, look at that. That's thick. And that went through my needle. Top stitch 90, ladder stitch. You can do it. That thick thread. Yes, you have to have that special threader to thread it through there. But yes, it goes through yeah, the needle just fine. Thing. Those long wire things, oh. yes. Yeah, that also disappear on me. They come six per package, and if I can find six, I'm doing good. I think I have about 20 in my house, and I think I can find two or three. Um, so I think that's, I've gone through everything. Thing. So that's it. Any questions on anything? The software for that notebook is that does that come on a um, thumb, like a thumb drive or? It comes on a CD. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do for some of you guys. Okay. Um, if if you want to purchase this, you can come. You know, get in touch with me. I have a CD drive on mine bring a flash drive and your cd what i'll do is i will pull it up and i will just copy it onto your flash drive for you okay. i can do that okay that's not a problem because i know a lot of they don't come with i have an i have an external um cd drive for my um desktop because they don't come with it and i have a lot of things on cd and i know when i purchase this one and then when i pur i have a newer um laptop a bigger one I purposely looked for one with a CD drive in it, and it was hard to find. And of yeah. course, you know when you, I love going to with these twenty somethings, and I'm going no, and they, they look at you like, what what is that? Yeah, really, <laughs> they do. I'm gonna pull out an eight-track tape and really throw you for a loop. <laughs> look at this. But um, yeah. So, but I'm always happy to do that for you because I'm more than happy to take it and then transfer it to a flash drive for okay, you. Okay, great. And then, then your CD is going to be your backup okay. in case you so need it. you call and say the stuff is in, I'll just... Yeah, yeah you can I'll just... bring that... Yeah, thing. just bring it in, and, and I, I can do that for you. I have no problems doing that for you. Okay, super, thanks. So, yeah, and I know that um, we do have some edge-to-edge -edge embroidery for the jumbo, for the big hoops. We have some jumbo ones out there, if you... That, um, Emily Scott... And they do, they are downloads. Because when I got them, I'm going, what? You know, and then I opened it up. I went, oh, they're downloads only. So, of course, I stapled it all closed so people couldn't kind of poke in. Um, you know, so just so you know that they have that also. You could do that. But I'm always happy to transfer transfer things. And I even have a, a um, three and a quarter inch dri external drive too. If you have stuff on a three and a quarter inch drive that you need to be updated, I can also do that for you. Because mm -hmm. I know some people had had some for their old machines. You know, they're really old machines. They, they use those three and a half inch or three and a quarter inch drives. So I would, I could transfer that for you too. Okay. I have, I have the technology. Just let me know if you need that. You have to let me know. So I'll bring my, bring it in. But, um, I do have that that technology. I have old technology. I'm the paleontologist of, <laughs> of sewing stuff. So, all righty. Any other questions? Okay, we'll do show and tell. So, did you have show and tell, or are you yeah. just up here to look? I was just wanted to see the thread. 